Greetings, Globeheads and Flatards, and Happy New Year. This is our end-of-the-year wrap-up and uh, naming of the best flat-earther comment for 2018. Now, um, one of the very first videos that I ever released, within minutes of it being released, I got this very ugly comment from a flat-earther who was upset about me allegedly deleting a comment from another flat earther. So the accusation was that a flat earther came in, put up a comment debunking what I just said, that I didn't like the comment or maybe it made me look bad or something, and so I deleted it. And so this other, a, a third person was commenting on that and calling me a charlatan and disingenuous and all that because I had supposedly deleted this comment. The thing is, I never deleted any comment. To this day, I've never deleted a single comment. Now, there's some weird things that have happened, uh, whether it's filters or something going on. I don't know. Sometimes comments haven't posted like they were supposed to. This particular comment um, that was the that I was accused of deleting, I actually found the the uh, notification I got by email that the comment had been posted, and the entire text of the comment was in that notification. I cut and pasted it back into the comments section so it would be there. I actually want my viewers to be able to see the comments of Flat Earthers um, if they're well-reasoned arguments um, then it's uh, something that we can discuss and look into further if they are completely hateful unhinged um, craziness I think it benefits our side more and hurts the Flat Earther side more so I certainly don't want uh, those kind of comments removed. Now, I do reserve the right to remove a comment um, if it is offensive to others. Maybe if it's uh, racist content or or bigoted in some way. I don't want my I don't want my channel to be a place for that kind of uh, for for any kind of bigotry or hatred toward others. However, if it's directed at me, I won't remove it just because I don't like it or don't agree with it. Um, I've got some pretty thick skin, um, but I but I also uh, um, I think if you go really really negative and really angry, I don't think it hurts me as much as much as it hurts you and your own your own credibility. Um, and this is important to me. You know, there's a there's a flat earther out there called M Bins, and he recently released a f a video called Questions for Globe Enthusiasts or something to that effect. And uh, I started watching his video and I thought, you know, I've got some, I've got some answers to some of these questions, very logical, well-reasoned, thought-out um, answers that are provable. And I went down to the comments section and it said, comments have been disabled for this video. Now, I can think of nothing more disingenuous or dishonest than making a video that that is called questions for anybody and then disabling comments so nobody can answer your questions that means that you're you're just lying you're not telling real questions you're not really a truth seeker you're not really looking for answers um you're just being disingenuous and dishonest and i have no intention of doing that um there's another flat earther called daniel pratt who's for some reason overly emotional i mean in some of his videos he's almost crying because he's just so upset that the world doesn't agree with him um and he's completely in, insane and unhinged and dishonest and uh so i've been told that any comments that uh are on his comment section that he doesn't like he just simply deletes them and he won't respond so this is kind of typical of the th of the flat earthers, um, but it's not who I intend to be. So, but I've had some great comments out there. And some of the best ones are where a conversation gets started and we have a little bit of back and forth and I find this very entertaining. The most recent one um, was a guy by the name of Scotty Storm um, who was completely hung up on this uh, second rule of thermodynamics and he wanted to talk about that, and he wanted me to explain um, how how that worked. <laughs> and it cracked me up for two reasons. One, 
has absolutely nothing to do with the shape of the flat earth uh, or the sh shape of the earth in, in general. Um, the second law of thermodynamics says that things will tend toward entropy. And I've heard people try to argue, uh, use this argument for uh, a counter to evolution and things like that. Um, and I think that's kind of where he was going. But for some reason, these whacked out people get the question of evolution tied in with the question of the shape of the earth. And those are two completely separate issues. Um, it just doesn't make any sense. Whether the earth are round, is round or flat has nothing to do with the second law of thermodynamics. But the main reason I found it hilarious is that flat earthers don't believe in the laws of physics in the first place. You can't cherry pick and start throwing a law of physics out there to support your side when you very clearly do not believe in the laws of physics. And if you're a flat earther, you can't tell me that you do believe in the laws of physics. The laws of physics don't allow a sun and moon to hang in the sky above the earth and travel in a circle. Okay? Things travel in the in a circle in the cosmos because they are orbiting something. Gravity makes that happen. You can't have them defy gravity hanging above the planet and traveling in a circle. If something is moving in a straight line, it has to have a force act, acting upon it to make it turn. Um, things don't normally move in circles. Um, but secondly, flat earthers don't believe in gravity. And if you don't believe in gravity, you must dismiss the laws of physics. Uh, if you claim things just fall because of buoyance or density, um, then you're rejecting uh, the laws of motion right out. Because if if you hold a ball out in front of you and drop it, um, it needs a force to act upon it in order to tell it to move in some given direction. Density and buoyancy doesn't do that for you. That force is called gravity, moves it toward the earth. Interestingly enough, if you had two balls, a beach ball and a bowling ball, and gravity disappeared, which one do you think would be harder to get to the floor? You would need force, more force to get the bowling ball moving because it has more mass. Um, it would be much easier without gravity to get a beach ball to the floor than it would a bowling ball. You would need to exert more force upon the bowling ball. And interestingly enough, gravity does exactly that. Um, it um, exerts more force on the object with the greater mass, um, which is what is required of a greater mass to get it moving in, its, in, in, in a direction. And so it all works out with gravity. But for a flat earther to latch on to a law of physics when y'all don't believe in the law of physics is hilarious. Um, another conversation that I had recently was a flat earther trying to get me to concede that he was more open-minded because one definition of open-mindedness is that it is a person who's open-minded is open to more open to new ideas. And he's the one with the new idea of the flat earth. Um, first of all, that's hilarious because uh, the idea of the earth being flat is thousands of years old. Um, the newer idea of the two is the understanding of the globe that's only been around. We've only had that understanding for a couple of thousand years. Um, <clears throat> some people think 500. That's a myth. Um, but we've understood the globe for about 2,000 years. Um, but secondly there's more to being open-minded than just that and when you reject any evidence put out there because you're so determined to believe in the flat earth for which there is no evidence uh the idea of calling yourself open-minded is hysterically funny um but the winner of the funniest comment for 2018 was a gentleman that was arguing with me about uh this concept of a close a localized sun and he told me the sun is 10 to 20 miles above the earth so I pointed out to him that the sun is at noon in Korea when it is setting in Chicago and so in Korea at noon um, you'd be looking up at the sun that was about 20 miles away and in Chicago it would be like 7500 miles away and so I asked him to explain to me why it's still the same angular size in both places. And his response was, because 
you're looking at the sun all wrong. It's not a physical thing. It's a metaphysical thing. And we each see our own sun. That's the top Flat Earther comment for 2018. Happy New Year, everybody. Enjoy YouTube and don't fall for the silliness of the snake oil salesman.